ओम श्री साई राम प्रशांति संदेश साई पर्ल्स ऑफ विजडम वेलकम टू यू वेल आफ्टर द समर हॉलीडेज द स्कूल एट वरवकोंड रीओपन्ड फॉर द न्यू सेशन राजू वेंट अलोंग विद हिज ब्रदर टू द स्कूल एज इफ नथिंग एट ऑल हैड हैपेंड it was only then that he actually attended school he became the leader of the school prayer a role he had played since he was small boy delighting the teachers with his mellifluous voice the teachers admired him and vied with each other to teach in his class manchi razu tammi razu and Mahbub Khan being especially fond of him Venkama recalls that Razu was admitted to 8th standard in the high school at Urawakonda and that his claim of being Sai Baba and the news of his miraculous powers had spread to the people there in those days singing of a prayer composed by rabindra tagore began daily sessions in schools established by any bent of the theosophical society the same prayer was sung in razu's school also i'll give you the english translation moment to moment thy creation call resounds hearing thy magnanimous words hindus buddhists jains parsis muslims and christians come from the east and west to thy throne making the garland of love hail to thee who unites all humanity that's how the song goes the song which speaks of the unity of religions peace and tolerance the basic philosophy of indian life was destined to become the forerunner of the national anthem years later one thursday as razu was playing and talking to some of his classmates in the worship he raised his hand and waved yellow colored rice grains yes usually used for worship hence regarded as sacramental fell on the heads of his companions abdul qadir the student leader came to know of it and asked razu where he had got the rice and how it had emerged from his hand razu spread his right palm and pointing it with his left index finger showed abdul qadir the mark of a lotus in the center of his palm Well, on Thursdays, Razu was known as Sai Baba to visitors of his brother's house, and later at the house of Anjaneyalu, the excise inspector. Razu would go home early on Thursday afternoons, with permission from the teachers, to get ready for puja. The puja would begin after five in the evening, and would go until eight or nine at night. often there were no classes on those afternoons because most of the teachers holding him in high regard would leave school to attend puja often people would seek his counsel bringing their problems and worries after arati he would materialize vibhuti sweets and fruit and distribute them as prasadam to the devotees he also answered questions most of them before they could be asked even his headmaster struck by the radiant glow on razu's face bowed his head in salutation to him though many gathered at the house for prasadam the headmaster and teachers like manchi razu tammi razu v c kondappa and sesha ayengar came to listen and benefit from razu's 
spiritual wisdom. Many teachers, including Per Razu, who wrote poems about him, and H.S. Venkatramana, named their children after Baba, while some others were afraid and treated him as a divine being. In those days, the people of Uravakonda also felt devotion towards him and performed rituals, pujas, and attended bhajans in large numbers. Well, outside of school hours, Radhu would advise his classmates how to live a noble life. He would collect a group in Subramanya temple and teach bhajans and songs on Sai Baba of Shirdi. The name Sai Baba of Shirdi thus became a link for the world. Raju's following was unquestionable. The boys would sometimes neglect their homework and spending their evenings singing bhajans or following Raju. The elders, supported by irate teachers, often punished them for this behavior. We were beaten countless times, K. Sita Ramarao, his classmate, would say later that Raju was much scolded by his sister-in-law for neglecting his studies. You are not even a Brahmin boy, like your friends. She would shout at him. They at least can ask for arms moving from door to door. Whereas you cannot even do that. If you do not study well, how are you going to live? Afraid of inciting wrath of the elders, the boys would post one Miran Moin Din, M-O-I-N-U-D-D-I-N, to act as a watchman whenever they planned a big bhajan meet. If an elder was sighted, Moin Din would alert the boys and the bhajans would end abruptly. For discharging this duty, he would be allowed an extra helping of the day's prasadam, earning himself the nickname Prasadam Bhakta, devotee of consecrated food. Years later, Moinuddin would visit Puttaparthi to have Baba's darshan. He stood near a statue and looked at Baba with intense longing. Baba spotted him from a distance, came near and asked, is that not Prasadam Bhakta? When did you come? Moinuddin was beside himself with joy that Baba still remembered him in the old intimate way. Many would come to seek his help. On one occasion, a Muslim horse cab driver lost his horse. He was greatly distressed as his livelihood depended on the horse and he would go hungry unless the animal was found. Someone suggested he go to Razu. When he came there, Razu said, go to the grove on the outskirts of the town, about a kilometer and a half way. Your horse will be found grazing there. The driver did as directed and found the horse. As Razu had himself said, that he would. Well, interestingly, a similar episode took place during the times of Sai Baba of Shirdi when another horse cab driver lost his horse and in a similar fashion Sai Baba helped the poor man to recover it. Well, in another incident, a teacher reported the loss of his pen. Razu instantly named a certain servant as the culprit. The teacher protested and vouched for the servant's innocence and honesty. However, he searched the servant's belongings in the latter's absence. The pen was not found, but Razu explained that the servant had sent it to his son in Anantapur, and a detailed inquiry soon confirmed Razu's words. See, the, the divinity is revealed right from the childhood. Disgusted with his crippled son, 
secretly took him and left him in a far off place. It's an incident concerning a Brahmin. Later, when he felt repentant and looked for the son, he was missing. He went to Razu, who told him that in three days he would get news of his son and in eight days he would return. As predicted, a letter arrived from a local government officer informing the father that his son had been found and in a week the boy was brought home. There were a host of such predictions and all turned true. So many people began to perform puja and bhajans in his presence. Seshamarazu was not happy about this, for he was anxious that his brother should complete his studies and carve out a career for himself. He insisted on Razu being formally educated. Razu used to comment that the Telugu Pandit, his brother, did not know anything about him. Razu's teacher, Manchirazu Tamirazu, was greatly drawn towards him. Razu would answer his questions on philosophy, which also brought the other teachers to him. On Thursday, Razu told them to ask questions. There was a great commotion as the teachers vied with one another to ask questions. Like an adept scholar, Razu answered all their questions. H. S. Venkatramana was a science teacher and assistant headmaster at the Uravakonda school. His eminence in teaching earned him the president award. He scorned and challenged Razu's claim to divinity. Razu was unruffled and told him in his imitable gentle voice, conduct an experiment or test that you like, then decide whether to believe or not to believe. Then Venkatramana took a coconut and said, I'll break this coconut now. Can you tell me how it will break? Razu said, it will break into five pieces. When Venkatramana broke the coconut, there were exactly five pieces. Even then, he did not have faith in young Razu. Once, he was suffering from an acute stomach ache, which no doctor could cure. Some of the teachers suggested that he go to Razu, who by that time had started to cure diseases. Venkat Ramana's stubborn pride did not allow him to go to his student. When his wife approached Razu, he asked her, How is your husband's stomach ache? Materializing some vibhuti and giving it to her. That very moment, Venkat Ramana's stomach ache disappeared. Finally convinced, he changed his attitude and became Razu's foremost disciple. Many others followed and became devotees as well. The headmaster, T. Lakshmi Pati, maintained stringent discipline and as a teacher was very systematic. Being a devoted man, he held bhajans in his house every Sunday. His daughter, Lalita, would recall that Razu attended the sessions and took the lead in singing. His song, Karunakara, Karuninsarava, Karunakara, Karuninsarava, still rings in my ears. The whole day was spent in Upasana, and in the evenings there was puja. He even materialized a rose for my mother. I went to school with Razu and played with him in the evenings. Razu's bountiful acts of grace had begun. He would bless the sick with the Bodhi Prasadam, and they were cured to dispel the doubts that he was none other than Sai Baba. Of Shirdi reborn, he would often materialize not only pieces of the robe or kafni worn by Sai Baba of Shirdi, but also pictures of him. On Thursdays, Bindala Hanumanta Reddy, one of Razu's classmates, wanted to talk to him 
Although he waited for a long time, Razu did not look at him. In his anger, he threw at Razu whatever came to his hand. When the headmaster heard of this incident, he had Reddy's food stopped in the hospital as punishment for his outrageous offense. This came to the notice of Abdul Qadir, the student leader. How Swami pardoned him, we will know in the next session, Sai Ram.